Hi, welcome to yet another weather lesson. I'm meteorologist Alexandra Cranford, and we are talking today about another weather lesson topic. So I'm coming to you live from my house, and we have talked about a lot of different things with these weather lessons. Thank you guys so much for joining me for all of these. We started, what, more than a month ago, I guess. Yeah, uh, almost exactly a month ago um, in what? No, more than that. It's been longer than that. It's been a long time, maybe two months. And we have t covered a lot of different topics, but one of the topics um, that is so basic that I have not covered yet and that I wanted to share with you guys today is just stuff about the atmosphere. It, we kind of take it for granted that the atmosphere is out there, that this is where all this weather is happening and farther up. This is where meteors are burning up. This is where all sorts of things are keeping us um, from burning up and also keeping us from freezing. All these things going on in our atmosphere and yet we haven't really talked all that much about the atmosphere itself just yet. So that's what we're talking about today in our weather lesson. And there are some very interesting things about the atmosphere. So what we'll cover today is I think first we'll just kind of talk generally about what it is. Um, we will then look at what it's made of then we will look at the layers of the atmosphere, which is a really big, very basic sort of meteorology lesson um, that you would actually cover even in uh, like a university course, you would have uh, at least a little bit of time spent on covering the different layers of the atmosphere and how they differ from each other. And then we will also talk about um, very quickly the temperature differences between all of those layers because that's kind of what sets the stage for these different specific layers. So for all my student friends, welcome. I hope you're doing well. Goodness, we're getting towards summer, aren't we? But we're still um, doing our weather lessons and I have little Ben coming in just in time. Hey, Benny, hey, hey friend. Uh, <laughs> so he's just on the outskirts here, but we're going to talk today about the atmosphere. So um, the atmosphere, of course, is just the big sort of bubble or cloud of gas that you can think about around the um, Earth. So it goes out thousands of miles. Um, it gets thinner and thinner and thinner the farther out you go. Oh no, baby, those are my papers for the weather lesson. <laughs> he's trying to lie on them. Okay. It goes thinner, it gets thinner the farther out you go from the Earth's surface. And there are these different gases that the atmosphere is made up of. Um, and so a lot of times we talk about the very lowest layer of the atmosphere where weather happens. But there are these really, um, you know, much larger kind of areas where other stuff is going on, where the atmosphere gets much, much thinner and there are fewer molecules of what we would consider um, air or these gases. So what is the atmosphere made of? If you are a student joining me for a weather lesson on the atmosphere, um, I hope that perhaps you've heard of this depending on how old you are. And if you're an adult, not a bad reminder that this is actually what mostly makes up our atmosphere. 99.998% of the atmosphere is really these four things. Almost all, mostly nitrogen, 21% oxygen, some tiny little bit of argon, and then a very small amount of carbon dioxide. Um, and then there are lots of other smaller percentages, even smaller than this, of other gases in the atmosphere. But very interesting, nitrogen dilutes the oxygen. It also keeps the earth from burning up. Nitrogen is also needed for proteins, for life on earth to make proteins, which of course is um, essential. Um, oxygen, of course, we need oxygen to breathe. Um, it's also needed for fires, which um, have um, helped human beings, of course. Um, argon is um, a gas that is in um, light bulbs. Um, it's used for preserving things. We don't talk about it quite as much and there's also not that much, but when you think about an entire atmosphere. And then there's carbon dioxide, which um, of course is what plants kind of breathe. If you think of it that way, if we breathe oxygen, plants would breathe carbon dioxide to produce oxygen. Um, and of course it keeps heat in. There's also what we've talked about a lot, which is uh, water vapor. So, so much of what we talk about with weather is precipitation, it's clouds, it's things like that. And of course, dealing with water in the atmosphere, water vapor is up to 4% um, of the atmosphere. But if you were in a, like a desert area, that would be very, like very, very small amounts, near 0% would be um, 
water vapor, but if you're in the tropics where there's so much moisture, it would be about 4%. Where we are um, very close to the Gulf, like on a hot, humid day, it would be roughly about maybe 3% uh, or so water vapor. So when we talk about a lot of um, moisture increasing in the atmosphere, getting a lot of water vapor in the atmosphere, feeling really humid, um, keep in mind it's still only a, up to three or four percent um, water vapor. So that is the atmosphere um, kind of in a nutshell. And so of course it is cons consists of all these different gases. Um, by far the biggest is nitrogen. Um, so again, students who haven't heard that before, that might be something um, new for you. Although we think of it as oxygen, Oxygen, of course, is the main thing in the um, air. Um, nitrogen is actually the most common. Um, and now we will talk about the different layers. And this, again, is something that you would encounter if you are learning about a very basic weather lesson for students in uh, middle school or junior high. And then also, again, even in a university course, an introduction to meteorology at a college or university would also cover um, these different layers. So here they are, the layers of the atmosphere. You can imagine the Earth's surface right here, and then this is going up toward space. So moving from the surface and going up. So just very quickly kind of to take it in, um, I guess we'll start, um, we could start with either one, but I guess we'll start with the exosphere since it's way at the top. And this would be about 375 miles above the Earth's surface that the exosphere begins. And again, it gets thinner and thinner kind of the, the farther out you get from the surface. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and telling me where you guys are watching from. I like to see that. The um, next layer would be the thermosphere. So I guess two out of five um, would be the thermosphere. This is very, very high up, more than 50 or so miles away from the surface of the Earth. That's where you would see um, space shuttles. That's where they would um, sometimes move through. Also auroras. We talked earlier in a weather lesson about the aurora borealis and the aurora australis, and that would be in the thermosphere. So pretty extremely far away from the Earth, uh, but still in the atmosphere that that would happen. Um, then we have the mesosphere, and that would be roughly about 30 miles away from the Earth's surface is where that one would start. And that is where the atmosphere begins to get a little bit thicker. It has a little bit more um, substance, more molecules. And so for that reason, the mesosphere is the layer of the atmosphere where meteors um, appear. So these little bits, um, we've also covered meteors in a previous weather lesson. This is where the little bits, um, these meteoroids we've talked about, would enter the atmosphere and then eventually would burn up. And that happens starting really in the mesosphere. So these two are kind of the outer uh, layers. This one almost barely even a layer. And then the mesosphere and the next one would be kind of the middle atmosphere. And the middle one is the stratosphere, which I'm sure you may have heard of before. And that depends um, on whether you're at the equator or at the North Pole, but it's roughly about four to 12 or so miles up from the surface of the Earth. Um, and so that is where eventually weather balloons, when they um, put off the National Weather Service, uh, sends up these weather balloons daily that would go all the way up into the stratosphere, um, many miles, but not this many miles above the Earth's surface. And so that would allow the weather balloon to travel all the way through this layer and then eventually get into the stratosphere. And the troposphere is um, a bit of a smaller um, area compared to the others. And again, it goes up to, from the surface to about four to 12 miles um, above the surface. And this is mainly where we have our weather happening. So when we talk about a weather and we are discussing storms and clouds and things like that, it's almost all happening in this layer, again, a fairly kind of close to the earth layer of the atmosphere called the troposphere. And Something also of note is that these divides, the spaces kind of between where the, it's, there's a quick transition from one layer to the next, those um, use the word pause. So the same beginning of the word, but instead of sphere to describe the layer, it is really kind of the boundary. So it would be the tropical pause right here between the troposphere and stratosphere. This would be the stratopause and so forth. So something, just a little um, weather note for um, those of you guys who are interested in that. And the way that we kind of look at the different layers and a big thing that it divides them is temperatures. 
So interestingly, there are these different things happening with the temperature profile as you go up in the atmosphere. Um, so this is just a very basic graph. You can see that, imagine the Earth's surface is down here and this is going higher up in the atmosphere. So you will see all the same layers, troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, and eventually exosphere. And then this is a little graph showing the, the temperatures and this way would be going warmer. So interestingly, you can see that it makes this zigzag effect when you track the temperatures through these different spots. Um, so for example, the troposphere, um, you can see how it goes. It goes against the warmer curve, the stratosphere gets warmer and warmer, the mesosphere eventually gets cooler farther up, and then the thermosphere gets warmer and warmer. So when you kind of try to decide where the pause is, the tropopause, which would be the one between the troposphere and stratosphere, that would be, you can usually find it by um, looking at the big temperature difference where the temperature really starts to take a turn. Now there can be little turns for sure within the troposphere, but just kind of the big overall pattern of temperature going up. And this is um, for a variety of reasons, but you can see that that is a big determining factor about um, where the different layers of the atmosphere are. And it um, can easily be seen by the temperature profile. Um, so that is a quick look at that. Again, just to kind of remind you um, why all these things matter, it is all these um, different just layers or different spaces above the earth where stuff happens. So we're always talking, of course, I'm a meteorologist, we're talking about the weather. So of course, I'm always talking about what's happening in the troposphere. Um, when we do our segments on meteors and we talk about meteor showers, um, that's happening again in the mesosphere. Um, sometimes we talk about auroras, we have certainly done that before in weather lessons as I mentioned and if you go really far to the north or the south near the poles um, then you talk, you know there's there's more uh, chance of course of seeing that or that's where you have to go to see the auroras and that's even higher up in the atmosphere so something um, very interesting I think to kind of begin the sort of discussion about weather and about the atmosphere this would be a very very um, kind of basic underlying thing to realize about our atmosphere and how interesting it is and how it's made up again of nitrogen and then a little bit of oxygen and then a smaller bit of argon, even smaller bit of carbon dioxide and water vapor, not very much, up to 4% or so, even though that's what we as meteorologists talk about so much, the water vapor eventually condensing into clouds and coming down as precipitation and rain chances and all of that. It's so interesting to me how all of this um, affects our daily lives and ends up as a, a shower, an afternoon thunderstorm or something that um, makes it impossible for you to either go for a walk for a minute or delay your trip outside and so forth. Um, so all of these things um, kind of related. So thank you for joining me for this one on the atmosphere. We talked about the different layers of the atmosphere, what it's made up of and so forth. Hey Ben, hey friend. Um, <laughs> and so we will have one more weather lesson today. They're from Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays um, during the weeks at 1 p.m. on Facebook Live. So we will do one more tomorrow, and tomorrow um, we are talking about um, baking. We're going to be baking tomorrow. And the exosphere, by the way, um, is where the um, satellites would be um, farther up than 375 miles, so really, really high up there um, to answer that question, I see. So we're going to be baking tomorrow. I'm really excited. I hope you guys.